Hey guys, in this video we will talk about Broodmother. She is an agility hero that is played in the mid lane most of the time. This guide is made for beginners that just want to learn the basics of the hero. An advanced brood guide will follow later. About myself, I am currently 5.8k MMR immortal with a peak MMR of 6.5k. At the time of making this video I got around 1500 games on brood. I am currently rank 15 brood mother on dota buff. Broodmother is one of the best lane dominating heroes in Dota. Against a lot of heroes, she will crush the lane making it very hard for a single hero to play against her. Her webs and spiderlings allow Brood to have one of the highest farming speeds in the game. She can farm lane creeps, neutral camps and ancients giving her a network lead that allows you to take over the game with a lot of items. With her spider army, Brute can take towers very quickly, allowing her to put on huge pressure onto the enemies. Brute is squishy. She relies on attacking enemies to get lifesteal. This makes her easy to kill with stuns and burst damage by heroes such as Lina. Brute relies on having a net worth lead. It's hard to play the game when you fall behind as Brute. This means you must play very carefully, otherwise you will lose your whole lead and feed a lot of gold for the enemies. There are heroes that are quite hard to play against when you don't have a lot of experience with playing Brute, such as Legion Commander, Tide Hunter and Kunker. Basically heroes that can kill your spiders very easy. Once you are comfortable playing Brute, it's not that hard to play against those heroes, but it takes practice. So don't let yourself down when you fail against those heroes at first. Now we will take a look at the control groups that are recommended to play Brute. There are three main hotkeys that you need to play the hero. We need select hero. This selects brute itself. For me this is on one. The next one is called select all controlled units. This makes you select brute mother, all spider links and illusions you got. For me this is on two. The last one is under advanced hotkeys and it's called select all other units. This will only select your spiders and illusions but not the main hero itself. Spawn Spiderlings is your nuke ability that lets you create new spiders when killing enemies. You get more spiderlings for each level in the spell up to a maximum of 4 spiders. Those spiders have a passive that will create a weaker version of themselves called spider rides when killing enemies. Spin webs allows you to create webs onto the ground, increasing your movement speed, health regeneration and giving yourself the ability to move freely over any trees and high grounds. Incapacitating Bite is a passive spell that causes attacks to inflict a crippling poison onto the enemies, making them miss 60% of the attacks while slowing their movement speed up to 50%. Insatiable Hunger is your ultimate. When activating this spell, Broodmother will gain bonus attack damage and lifesteal, allowing her to quickly take down enemies while sustaining her HP pool. Broodmother's skill build is pretty straightforward. You want to start with webs level 1 for the extra HP region and movement speed in lane. Then you take 2 points in your spawn spiderlings, alternating between both spells until you have both of them maxed out at level 8. This makes you able to farm as fast as possible with a lot of spider. Then you want to take insatiable hunger, your ultimate at level 9, 12 and 18, fill in the rest of the levels with incapacitating bite and talents whenever available. The recommended talents for this guide are Nuke Damage, Cooldown Reduction, Spider's Attack Damage and Insatiable Hunger Bonus Damage. Now we will talk about the item build. Starting items are as follows. Swelling Blade is needed to get last hits early on. Dude's base damage is only 47 so it's quite hard to last it against some heroes without the Quelling Blade. Next is Spring of Protection giving us some armor early on, later used to build into Soul Ring. One Admiral Branch is used for consuming your Tango. The rest of your gold is spent on free mangoes to use spawn spiderlings more often. Soul Ring is the first item you want to buy. It allows you to consistently use your spawn spiderling ability to spawn more spiders, increasing your farm by a lot. Falcon Blade is the next item I would recommend. It's only optional. It gives you some mana region which helps you to sustain a constant spider production. In additional damage helping you last it and 175 additional health making you more survivable. The first major item you buy is a diffusal blade. 
to help you to catch up to people, allowing you to slow them with your in-cap bite. Provides a good amount of agility, increasing your damage and attack speed and provides additional mana burn. Quick note, in some games you might need an orchid instead of a diffusal blade to catch mobile enemies such as Queen of Pain, Puck and Ember. A king bar is the most important item on Brute. A BKB allows you to join team fights without getting killed by burst damage. You're pretty much unkillable when you use your insatiable hunger in BKB and just attack people. The next item I would recommend is an Aghanim's Scepter. With Aghanim's you can cover a huge part of the map with your webs. It will speed up your farm by a lot and allows you to join fights on other lanes really easy. This item can be picked up before BKB if you think you can delay your BKB by some minutes. With the previous items we already have some good stats, magic immunity and the catch for enemies. The next item we will build is an AC. This item will increase the physical damage you and your spiders deal by a lot because of the attack speed and armor reduce aura. Also allows you to siege the enemy high ground. Usually you will have this item around level 20 together with your spiders attack damage talent allowing you to melt towers. The Bizzle Blade. After AC we will sell the Falcon Blade to buy a Bizzle Blade. This item gives you a gap closing ability to focus important enemies with 2 seconds run. Now we will talk about web placement. The first two webs should be placed as soon as possible. Once you spawn on a map, you just want to run straight to the mid lane. Placing your first ward if you have got some. And then placing your first web as soon as you can. You want to cover this neutral camp and the area to the tower. The second web will be placed over here. So you can have access to the whole mid lane. Yes. When when you hit level 4, you will use shoot. your third web like this. To cover this neutral camp. Okay. So you can run over the side ground and farm this camp. And you can run here to farm this camp. And the other web you got with level 4 should be placed somewhere around this area. So you're able to run here and farm this camp as well. On the dire side, the web placement is basically mirrored. The first web you want to place can be placed over here to get access to the small camp. And the second one can be placed right in the middle again. Once you have the level 4, you want to place the third web over here, so you get the access to the medium camp. And your fourth web should be placed somewhere like here. So you can quickly farm this camp and this hard camp. Now I will show you some web placements after you took the tier 1 tower. Usually you want to place the next webs over here. And again over here covering the same places as we already discussed in the Radiant part. And then your third web over here. Then one web over here to get access to the lane. Probably one web somewhere over here so you can push this tower. At some point when you have Aghanims, you will get the access to more webs. Instead of having 8 webs, you will have 18. And then you want to try to cover the enemy triangle like this. Probably covering one of the side lanes. Either the top lane, or potentially if you want, you can cover the bot lane as well. For example like this, you have access to all three lanes. This will allow you to put on huge pressure onto the enemies and ramp up your farm really hard yes. with the agrams. If you think you're behind or the enemy team got huge kill threats, then instead of placing all the reps onto the enemy side, you can place some webs over here onto your triangle and cover the rest of your jungle as well. Just to enhance your farm. I'm waiting for the enemies to show somewhere on the map for you to make aggressive moves again. 
another important thing that I didn't talk about yet. You can select your webs like this. Just drag a box over the middle of your web and then you can destroy the web. You don't do this and you have maximum webs placed. For example, with the agonims it's 18, without agonims it's 8. And you place a new web. One of like the, the first web you place will get destroyed. Uh, one second, let me show you. Like this. If I put one more web, probably this one will get destroyed here. Yeah. But if I need this web, for example, I can just select one in the back that I won't need in the next minutes. Destroy this manually. And then place a new web. Now we will talk about some matchups and how to play the early game as Brute. There are basically two different situations in the lane. The first thing, as we can see in this match, is against a hero that has no way to clear my spiders. For example, heroes like Arc Warden, Visage and Outworld Destroyer. There's basically no way those heroes can kill your spiders. So this is uh, basically three lanes for Brute. I will just show you the first like five to six minutes speed up here. Level one, there's nothing important. We place the webs before the lane stage as we talked about earlier. And we just want to get level two and three. Once we hit level two, we try to use the spawn spider links two times in, in the first wave. And then immediately run to the um, to the neutral camp, farm in the camp. Every time spawn spider links is off cooldown, we try to use the spell, just to get out as many spiders as we can. Again, we use the nuke. Now we can just push out this wave. Basically just auto hitting the creeps and every time we have the nuke ready, we use the nuke. Now we have enough gold for the soul ring, the soul ring is on the courier right now. And I'm just farming more camps. Once I hit level 4 and I have Soul Ring, I can play a little bit more aggressive onto Arc Warden. Because he has no way to deal with my spiders. And I already have so much spiders that he can, can't do anything against me. So basically right now, I will just clear this creep wave and then run at Arc Warden. Yeah. Like here can basically do nothing. He has to TP out, otherwise he will die. Basically what you want to do most of the time is you just want to push out the mid wave. And after you push out the mid wave, um, you try to get to a neutral camp, killing the neutral camp. And then once the enemy core, like the enemy mid laner oversteps and you think you have enough spiders, you can just run at him and kill him in those easy matchups. And then once you kill them, you go back to farming. You push out the wave. You go back to the neutral camp, from another neutral camp. Now after we found the neutral camps, we go back to the wave. And from now, we have such a huge advantage that every time he comes into the lane, we can just run to him and kill him. As you can see right now, we are level 8. This guy is level 5. And we have nearly double his net worth at minute 5. Ah, uh, minute 6. So there's basically nothing you can do right now if you just cycle between farming the lane and farming the crew camps and then once he oversteps we just run at him and kill him. Now we will take a look at one of the harder matchups. For example against heroes like Tanker, Ember Spirit, Queen of Pain. Basically all those heroes that are quite hard to kill that have either some mobility or disable spells like Queen of Pains, Blink, Ember's Slide of Fist, Ember's Ultimate, or basically just Tanker's Torrent and Boat. All of those heroes have an AoE clearing ability that can one-shot or nearly one-shot your spiders. So it's really hard to farm the lane with the spiders. So I will basically just speed up the early game again. As we already saw in the other replay, like the first one, I just want to get, uh, the first wave. I just want to get level two. Once I hit level two, I use the nuke. 
We get some spiders, then I run to the neutral camp and farm the neutral camp. Then we just rotate between the camps. And as you could see here, like he's only level 2 and my spiders lose half HP when he uses Flame God and Flutter Fist. So from now on, I won't use my spiders that much to farm the lane. Like once he hits level 4, I know he can just one shot my spiders. Um, so all I do is just farm the neutral camps every time I can. If you check the lane, the lane is right over here in the middle. Um, and he's not pushing the wave as hard, so I just farm neutral camps. But as you can see right now, he's pushing the lane every time. You see the enemy core pushing the lane, and the creeps will run into your tower. You want to be here, trying to last the creeps under the tower. Otherwise, if he's just staticing the creeps over here and just uh, last hitting and denying the creeps, you shouldn't even bother and just let him do his stuff, and you just farm the neutral shields. But right here, he's pushing the creeps in a little bit. Creeps are in front of my tower, so I can farm them with my hero. While I still have the spiders here farming the neutral camps. Yeah, as you can see here, I sent my spiders to farm the neutrals. While I'm over here trying to last the creeps under the tower. Right now, I will go back to farming the neutrals. I will speed up a little bit. Like there's basically not much I can do right now. I'm just farming the, the creeps and as soon as he pushes the wave into the tower like this. I will just run back to the tower and farm the creeps under the tower. Usually against enemies like Ember or Kanka you don't have any kill threat of them before you get the fusel. Like there's not much you can do besides just out farming them. As you can see right here it's 10 minutes and we just did what I told you here. We found all those camps here and every time he's pushing the wave into the tower I'm trying to last the creeps under the tower so the tower doesn't get that much damage. And I have like 1.5k gold more than him. At the point that I have defusal then I can start playing the lane and just run this guy. Like right here I'm level 12 I have level 2 ultimate and defusal. This is what I'm looking for. As soon as I get the defusal and level 12 I will basically just run this guy with ultimate, blowing him, trying to kill him. Like he was a bit cocky here. Uh, I'm pretty sure he could have survived here, but he overstepped. Maybe he was a little bit too confident, and so I just killed him. But even if you don't kill the guy, you can just burn all of his mana um, while being full HP because of your ultimate, and then he either has to go back to base to refill mana, um, or you can just freely farm more to wave. So basically at the point when you have level 2 ultimate and defusal, you are stronger than all those quote unquote counters like Conquer and Ember and Queen of Pain. You can just run at them and hit them. There's not much they can do. The last thing we will look at is how to play Brute in the late game. Um, usually there are many people that are way too aggressive as Brute. And they just want to push all the time. Like they think Brute is a pushing hero and they just push, push, push. And they just run into enemies the whole game, just 1v5, and then they die and then they lose all the advantage. And then they lose the game. And this is not how to play Brute. As Brute Mother, basically what you want to do is you try to look for pickoffs. Like heroes that are solo, and that you know that you can solo kill um, without any threat of dying. Like right here, it's 21 minutes. We've already taken all the top towers. We've already taken all the mid towers, like the tier 1, tier 2. And basically there's only bot tier 2 tower. We already took Roshans, we have Aegis. With the Aegis, I'm not afraid of dying at all. Like my team is right next to me. If I take a fight right now and the Aegis pops, they will just be here and help me. And I have like... 5k gold more um, than the top farming guy in the enemy team. Rewind 10 seconds. So like right here. I'm just trying to farm around the areas. We want to take objectives. Like we want to take this tower. And then I'm farming around the areas. And then as soon as I see this guy. Like I know I'm 
10 times stronger than him right now with the Defusal, Aghanims and Aegis. Um, there's nothing he can do against me. Like, he just has Blade Mail and Blink Dagger, and I know I can just run at him. So what I do is, I just use Ultimate here. And basically just cancelling Blink Dagger with the Nuke, running at him with Ultimate and Defusal Blade. There's nothing he can do. Like, he just straight up dies. Like, this is what you want to do as Brute. You don't want to try to break the high ground and then dive to Terrace. Um, you'd rather look out for a kill on the map. And then afterwards, after we got the skill, I will most likely push up this wave and then run to my team getting the, um, the bot barracks. I think. Yeah, as you can see here, I'm pushing in the wave. Placing my webs over here, joining my team to get this tower after we got the kill. Like if Legion would be live right now, this play would be okay because we have such a high lead and they can't do much against us. But this is just way more safe, like 100 times more safe if we just wait for a pickoff and then you, you get the tower. Yeah. And basically with Legion dead there's nothing they can do right now and me having the Aegis. So please guys, don't just run into the enemy base. Try to take all the auto towers before you go high ground. Get the Aegis and then get a pick off. And after you have Aegis and you got a pick off, then you can go high ground. Thanks all of you guys for taking time watching my video. I hope all of you learned something. If you have any suggestions, any questions, feel free to tell me. And I would love you guys to join me by on Twitch. The link will be in the description down below. Have a nice day. See you guys.